Hello, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to the Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Today is Flashback Friday, a feature in which I republish one of my earlier videos you might not have seen that contains really important coping strategies that will help you attain a better mood. Now, here's today's video. I've started a new uh, ritual recently in, in which I like to tell a joke at the beginning of the video uh, because depression can be a depressing subject, so I want to start with something funny. Here's a joke I like. A doctor approaches a patient and says to her, I have bad news and I have worse news. The patient says, well, what's the bad news? The doctor says, you only have one day to live. The patient says, well, what's the worst news? He says, I've been trying to get a hold of you for the past 24 hours. The title of this video is called How to Rewire Your Anxious Brain. Up until the shooting of this video, I've probably made about 185 videos, but only a handful of them have been about anxiety. Now this is strange because 80% of the people who suffer from depression also suffer from anxiety, including myself. Although depression is often called the common cold of mental illnesses, anxiety is actually more prevalent than depression. One out of every five Americans will suffer an anxiety disorder in the course of their lifetime. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to heal anxiety by looking at two major brain circuits in the brain that are involved with anxiety. And the first involves the neocortex or the thinking brain. <clears throat> it's located right here in your forehead. And uh, let me show you right now how that part of the brain figures into anxiety. Let's say that you're hiking in a national park like Glacier Park, Montana, which is where I used to hike. One day you're walking down the trail and you see a bear. And you think, oh my God, I can't believe it. And you run off to the side to get out of the way, come back, the bear is no longer there. And phew, I avoided that. The next day you continue your hike and you wonder, oh my God, maybe there's gonna be a bear again, or maybe it'll be a cougar. And you start to have butterflies in your stomach. This is anxiety, the anticipation that something bad might happen. So anxiety has something to do with anticipating the future. We humans have highly developed frontal lobes which allow us to imagine the future and the consequences of it. This is unlike my cat Bruce who sleeps peacefully on his couch without worrying about where his next dish of overpriced grain-free cat food is coming from. But we humans who can imagine the future often think about possible negative consequences and catastrophize. When this happens, we get involved in obsessive worry, and the way to stop this is to use cognitive behavioral therapy to basically uh, replace the fearful thoughts with realistic, rational thoughts. I'll give you a quick example. Let's say that Henry is waiting for a job interview. As he sits in the waiting room, he starts to imagine, well, well wait, wait, maybe I'll forget what I'm gonna say. Maybe my mind will go black. Oh my God, what will happen? At that moment, those thoughts send a signal to the brain that initiates chemical reactions that create fear and anxiety. Fortunately, Henry has been practicing his cognitive therapy skills, so he says, cancel, cancel. And then he says to himself, ah, I'm fortune telling, that's not right. So he replaces the negative thoughts with positive ones like, hey, I prepared well, I'll just do fine, just relax. And then the anxiety goes away. Now I'd like to share with you a second pathway in the brain that creates anxiety, and that is the amygdala. The amygdala is an almond-shaped structure located in the emotional brain. It's called the sentinel of fear, and for good reason. And this is how it works. Let's say you're visiting a friend's land in the desert, and you're walking along, and there's a hose coiled up that looks like a snake. You're walking by, out of the corner of your eye you see this hose, and you jump back, oh my god, it's a snake, I'm in danger. A moment later, you look at the hose and you see it's just a hose and you breathe a sigh of relief. But the amygdala didn't wait for that. It basically signals you to get out of the way before the cortex even know what's happening. So it reacts first and asks questions later. The amygdala was designed early in evolution to keep humans safe from danger when we were hunters and gatherers. What the amygdala does is it responds quickly enough to save your life and seizes control in times of danger. This is why it's nearly impossible to use your thinking brain to control the amygdala when that anxiety is stimulated. This is why it's very difficult to talk yourself out of a panic attack. And this is why when I was admitted to a hospital with an agitated depression, I couldn't believe it when the nurse said to me, Doug, sit down 
and use your cognitive therapy to calm yourself down. That's like throwing a feather at a charging elephant. I said, no, cognitive therapy will not work in this situation. Please give me an Ativan or some sort of a Clonabin or some sort of an anti-anxiety drug. She said, hey, if you keep this up, I'm going to have security come and tie you down. You can imagine what that did for my anxiety, right? It made it worse. She could not understand that I could not reason away an agitated depression. I could not talk myself out of panic. I had my first taste of amygdala-based anxiety when I was a child, and I walked around feeling a sense of dread and fear. I just couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't have a cause, but I was always afraid. My father would tell me that I was nervous in the service. This was a popular phrase used by World War II veterans. And speaking of veterans, an amygdala-based anxiety will also occur with a Vietnam vet who hears a car backfire and suddenly the amygdala says, hey, you're being attacked by the enemy. This is gunshot. Because amygdala-based anxiety occurs automatically and is outside of your conscious control, it must be treated in a totally different way than treating cortex-based anxiety. You have to use strategies that directly impact the brain and nervous system and bypass the thinking mind. So two obvious examples are exercise and deep breathing. I just made a video called uh, My Top 5 Strategies for Dealing with Anxiety, and I mentioned these two, and, as long as a bunch of others. And one of the things I mentioned, which I hadn't heard of before, is this idea of taking a deep breath and putting your face inside cold water and holding your breath. This activates the dive response, which is what divers experience when they're underwater, and somehow it activates the relaxation response and calms yourself down. If you don't have uh, a sink or a bucket of water, you can do this. I showed this in the other video. Take a gel pack from the freezer, put it over your eyes, and take a deep breath. After a couple minutes of that, you should feel more relaxed. And I'd like to have some of you try it because I've never tried it myself. So let me know what you think. In conclusion, the key to rewiring your anxious brain is to first determine which brain pathway is causing your anxiety. If it's the cortex and you have problems with worrying about the future or anticipating the worst, you have to use cognitive strategies like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, or DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, or even mindfulness meditation. Now, I've done two videos on this in the past I want to let you know about. One is called Three Steps to Overcoming Worry, and the other is called Cognitive Therapy for Depression, and I'll put their URLs in the comments section. On the other hand, if you suffer from amygdala-based anxiety, which means you feel anxious in your body, but there are no anxiety-producing thoughts, then you need to use strategies that directly calm your amygdala and reduce the activation that it creates in your body. These include deep breathing, exercise, and muscle relaxation. I described these in the video I just mentioned uh, about the top five strategies for keeping your anxiety at bay, and I'll put that link in the comments section too. Finally, another way of comparing these strategies is to say that the amygdala-based strategies work from the bottom up, and the cortex-based strategies work from the top down. And I am indebted to a book called Rewire Your Anxious Brain uh, for this information. You can find it in your bookstore and on Amazon.com. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you found the information on this Flashback Friday video helpful. If so, please give it a like as likes draw more and more people to this channel and hopefully some more subscribers. Uh, you can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me douglasblock at gmail.com. If you do want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo in the closing credits. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. And if you click on the bell to the right, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or live chat. And if you want to contribute to this uh, channel and become a patron, simply click on the Patreon image. You'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until next video, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much.